Good morning. It is uh, International Project Management Day. This is Frank Salatis. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I just took a quick look at uh, who was attending, and I see people from everywhere. Uh, Melbourne, uh, several cities in India, uh, New York City. I think I remember Roberta from New York City. I'm also in New York City. Um, <clears throat> we have people up in Toronto, uh, all over the place. So uh, thank you for, for joining, and uh, I, I guess you all know a little bit about International Project Management Day. And it is a day of recognition. It is a day of acknowledgement for project managers. And <clears throat> real quick story about that, and that is uh, back in, in 2004, when I was attending the PMI uh, Leadership Master's class, uh, on my professor, uh, Jerry Brightman, he told us to go change the world <clears throat> when we were graduating. and. Um, you know, I thought about that a lot, and I said, you know, well, that's kind of a hard thing to do, but let me, uh, let me think about it for a minute. And I, I thought we needed a day of recognition for project managers. And, you know, the story goes that, you know, we have uh, Mother's Day and Father's Day and, and all those different days, and uh, lots and lots of days of recognition, but we didn't have anything that would help us, uh, help people understand what project managers do. And, and project managers, I mean any project manager from a large project, uh, to a small project, <clears throat> those projects that go on from uh, just a couple of weeks to those that go on for years. And, uh, you know, most people don't even really uh, understand what goes into being a project manager, you know, the, the challenges associated with it. And I thought about it a lot and decided that well, what we should have this day of recognition. So that's what we have. We have International Project Management Day. Uh, the reason that it happens to be the first Thursday of November every year is that uh, I actually tried to find a day where there were, was no holiday or very few holidays. And uh, around the world, un unfortunately, uh, it was a real challenge because every day is a holiday or some type of celebration somewhere around the world. So <clears throat> this day worked out, I, I thought, the best. So that's why it's the first Thursday of November. And I just want you to think about one thing as we, uh, <clears throat> as we get started. And that is that uh, although that not everyone agrees that the that project management in itself is a profession, uh, <clears throat> what we do is we do have a lot of what we call professional project managers. People have pretty much dedicated their careers to being project managers. But I think that if you uh, ask a person, you know, tell me what, what does a project manager do, uh, what's the role of the project manager, and you talk to a, a person that is really not familiar with, with the procedures and policies of being a project manager, uh, you probably get a blank look or a uh, <clears throat> conf confused look because they just don't really know. And uh, to prove that, uh, one of the questions I like to ask when I'm giving a presentation is when you ask a child, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, how many of them actually say, I want to be a project manager? So just that in itself is telling us that you know, we have to do something to, to get people to understand exactly what, what is it that a project manager does. And <clears throat> so that's what International Project Management Day is about. You know, this is a day of uh, recognition. It's a day of acknowledgment. But uh, I am uh, very cautious to say that it is not really truly a day of celebration. Okay, the one thing I would tell you is that if you have a successful project, by all means celebrate. And uh, if you have successes during a project, you should celebrate them also. So celebrate often. But <clears throat> if you really look at project management, the, the really big picture of what's going on, and if you look at things like uh, PMI's Pulse of the Profession, a report that they do every year, if you look at the PricewaterhouseCoopers State of Project Management, and you look at other uh, white papers about project management, you'll find that uh, there's, there's still a lot of work to do, that uh, not every company actually embraces uh, what we'll call formal project management. <clears throat> and um, the, uh, the, the types of projects, that, that, that well, especially capital projects, uh, only about 44% of them actually deliver uh, on all of the strategic directives that have been assigned with them. So if you think about it, you know, we have a lot to do in order to get people to, uh, to really understand the value of, of having a good project management process in place, but also having a very, very trained, qualified, and competent project manager in place also. So these are some of the things that, that we're going to talk about 
today. Now, uh, <clears throat> our format here is similar to what we've done in the past. We're going to attempt a couple of poll questions to keep this uh, somewhat interactive. And I might ask you a couple of questions. And I'd like you to use your, your, your chat box or your question box to respond back with, a, uh, with what you think. You know, give me your, some of your thoughts. And, and through the presentation, I'll be asking or I'll be looking at your comments and, and, and reading back some of your thoughts and, and your ideas about project management, how to go forward, some of the challenges that you're facing, and things like that. So in order to kick off International Project Management Day, I thought a good subject would be the indispensable project manager. And a lot of you are probably thinking, well, wait a minute. You know, what, what, what do you mean by indispensable? Nobody's indispensable. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that and uh, give you some, some things to think about. But um, on that note, the first time I mentioned into, uh, the uh, indispensable project manager was at a PMI World Congress. I guess it was about three years ago. Maybe it was two years ago. Anyway, uh, I had an audience of about 200 people. And I wanted to just mention International Project Management and I brought, Management Day, and I brought up the uh, indispensable project manager. And before I could get too far into it, uh, a, a young lady or in the in the audience stopped me from speaking and had this. She had to say something, so I said, "Yes, what is it?" And and her comment to me was was kind of an interesting thing. She said that her grandmother told her that if you could stick your bu your head in a bucket of water and then pull it out and leave a hole, then you're indispensable. And you know, if you think about it, if you, uh, if you stick anything in a bucket of water and pull it out, it's certainly not going to leave a hole and be closed up right away, which meant that you know, nobody's indispensable. And so I, I kind of thought about that, and I said, OK, how am I going to address that? But the idea behind this, and you'll soon see, is that we can make ourselves uh, to be perceived to be somewhat indispensable by the things that we do and the value that we create. Now, uh, in this uh, slide here, this is a slide from Seth Gooden. And he said, every successful organization has at least one linchpin. Some have dozens or even thousands. The linchpin is the essential element, the person who holds part of the organization together. Without the linchpin, the thing falls apart. Now, you have to ask yourself, are you a linchpin? Are you someone who is keeping things together and making things happen? And if you are, then you are on that road to being indispensable. So think about uh, that, that, that quote from, from uh, Seth Gooden, because I think it's pretty important for us to, uh, to really consider. Now, one of the things that we're going to start with is, is attitude. It's your attitude. And I love this quote. I was going to buy a copy of The Power of Positive Thinking, and then I thought, what the hell good would that do? So let's start with attitude. Okay, the first thing that we want to do, and I, I, I promote positive leadership. I even wrote a book about it. But uh, you know, we have to think positive. Even during times of very, very difficult situations, we have to be very resilient. We have to find solutions. And, and many times, we need to find those, th through, those solutions through other people. That's our team. We want to help them to succeed, and, and by all of us succeeding together. Now, that's real value. That's when we add real value. Now, to set the stage, uh, the one thing I want you to do, okay, and this is where I, I'm going to look for some, uh, some comments, is can you give me just one word, only one word, that describes you? Okay, and and I'll, I'll tell you something real quick on this. I asked that question in a class once. And uh, I said, OK, I, you know, tell me, give me one word that describes you. And this uh, gentleman said, hungover. And I said, OK, thank you. Uh, but I, I wasn't really looking for your condition. I was looking for something about you personally. So I want you to think about it. If you had to describe yourself to someone using only one word, what would that word be? So let me see what kind of responses I get to that. Okay, um, we have, uh, I think it's Hamid from India. How you doing, Hamid? How are you? Mumbai. Okay. We have Murgan from Melbourne. We have someone from Bulgaria. We have South Africa on the line here. Let's see if we have any words. Hey, Atlanta, how are you? 
Okay, so let's see. I'm Jacob from France. Mumbai. Yes, it's clear. I can hear. Yes, we're good. Organizer. Enthusiastic. Resourceful. Driven. Excellent. Okay, we we got some good words. Professional. A thinker. Loyal. A workaholic. Hey, we're gonna have to work on that one a little bit. Power. Wow. Okay. Tenacious. Perseverance. Responsible. Excellent. Okay, now we got it going. Charming. Excellent. This is what we want to hear. So now that's easy to, to, to do. You think about it. I'm, I'm sure some of you said you were creative, passionate, uh, inquisitive, uh, just a, all these different words that describe the project manager. And that's what we want to do is we want to get people to tell us, to tell, we want them to understand how we see ourselves. And we want people to see us in that way. All those words that describe you. Now, the second thing about brand is ask yourself, what do you value in your place of business or in your personal life? You know, think about something that you truly, truly, truly believe to be very useful, very valuable, and that other people should have it. And people have told me all kinds of things. They told me about their iPhones. Uh, someone, uh, several people have mentioned the, the Keurig coffee maker. Okay? Some people talk about their car and things like that. And <clears throat> the point here is that if you have something of value, that means that other people have taken notice of it. Now, the point that we're trying to make here is if you create value, value leads us to brand. And if you have a recognizable brand, then you have success. And if you have success, then you have to continue to produce value. So the model I want you to think about in your workplace and even outside if you're doing volunteer work is brand you. What are you doing that is creating value? Okay, if you're passionate, if you're curious, if you're tenacious, if you get things done, you know, if you're creative, then you're creating value. And that value means that people are paying attention to you, which means you have brand. And if you have brand and people have seen that brand, then you now have success. So now you have to continue, continue to produce value. Now I have another question up here, and that is what are the characteristics of these successful project managers? So again, I'm, I'm asking a question. So what you can do now is just tell me, what do you think are the, uh, the characteristics of the project manager? Just a couple of uh, comments would be great. Okay, I see that someone is passionate. Someone's a father. Wow, that's great. Okay, uh, creative. Awesome, awesome. Like that word, awesome. A problem solver, a go-getter. Hey, somebody that's cool. Now that's important. Whoever said that? Okay, Raj said that. We we need to make project management cool. Uh, that is the goal. In fact, uh, those of you that have an opportunity today, sometime, maybe you can go to YouTube. Uh, and uh, just type in or go to Google and type in the project manager blues. Uh, I actually wrote a song about project management. Maybe you can play it today somewhere if you're having an event. Okay, the project manager blues. Intense, committed, passionate, persistent. Okay, hi Greenville, how are you Kelly? Uh, this is uh, Greg Wu, Greg Wu, oh, an enabler, absolutely. Trustworthy, a motivator, resilient, honest, energetic, facilitator. Excellent, hardworking, outstanding. Okay, great. Now, characteristics of the successful project manager. So we know what they are. You are someone who gets things done. You're approachable. You, pr you provide what I call authentic leadership. These are the things that we do as project managers. Now, I did a study several years ago and occasionally try to update it. And people came up to me, well, basically what I did was I got all this information, I collected it all through lots and lots of people, about seven, 800 people. And uh, I asked, what are the key competencies of a project manager? And the number one item that comes up con consistently is communication skills, verbal and written, even the formal and the informal communication. The second, leadership. The third, organizing skills, planning, time management, things like that. Your interpersonal skills, which means things like problem solving, uh, working with people, collaboration, facilitation, uh, negotiating. You as a project manager have to negotiate anything from schedule to resources to money to changes, things like that. Now I, I listed, uh, I asked for top five 
but I actually listed seven because I needed to make a point. Team building came in at six, but technical skills came in at number seven consistently. All right? And IBM did a study not that long ago, maybe two, three years ago, and they asked about the 15 qualities or competencies that a, that they, a, a CIO looks for when selecting or hiring a project manager. And uh, the number one on that list happened to be communications. Number 11 on that list was technical skills. So I'm, I'm making a point here that we as project managers have to continuously fine tune our interpersonal, our soft skills. But we also have to be aware of the technology around us. So although we don't have to be what we'll call technically competent, the experts can do that. Your functional managers are the technical experts, but you need to be technically credible in that you need to understand what is going on, how all the piece parts come together, and speak intelligently to the people on your team. The emphasis is always on professionalism in planning and execution. This is part of your brand. Okay? And it doesn't mean whether you're wearing a jacket and a tie or a suit. This simply means that you present yourself as professional all the time and that you have a focused and clear way of planning, working with your team, and then executing your plans. So let's focus on the professionalism. Let's focus on the, uh, the interpersonal skills, the soft skills. But keep in mind that you need to stay up to date on your technical skills also and make sure that you remain credible to your team. Now setting the stage. Uh, I'm going to ask you a quick question, and that is, how are project managers perceived by others, other managers, peers, and associates? And a technique we're going to use here just for a few minutes is mud slinging. So now you have to look at you, and you have to look at your, your colleagues that are project managers, and I want to know what are some of the perceived negatives about project managers and project management. There are some people out there, uh, just to give you a hint, Okay, uh, many people you have probably heard say something like, oh no, don't make a project out of this, or oh no, here comes the project manager. Uh, so why would people do that? You know, what, what are the perceived negatives of a, a project manager? Okay, so we know all the good things because all those words that describe you, but what are some of the, the, uh, the uh, more negative side that people perceive us as maybe having a problem? Okay, I see lots and lots of good stuff. Time management. Uh, oh, this is a great one. I think I might have to keep this one. Um, silo wall destroyer. Okay, so that's on the good side. But what are some of the perceived negatives? Okay, let me see if we can find any uh, in there. Mediators, listeners, being honest, proactive. What all kinds of good stuff here? Okay, the perceived negatives. Bossy. There we go. We're bossy. We're nagging. Oh, no, we're nagging. We are a hindrance. We are overhead. No, so we're going to change all of that. We're redundant. We're power hungry. We're authoritative. We're annoying. Oh. Uh, we're task drivers. We're nags and pests. Waste of money. Whoa. Okay, we need to fix all of this. Paper pushers, not listening, nosy, busy work, self-centered. Whoa, wow, you guys are pretty good at this. Micromanager, know-it-all, redundant, bottleneck. Okay, so... I guess you get the message. We are, we are perceived in some ways as, as not, not the, the best people around. But you know what? That's just because they, they don't understand us, and we're going to change all of that. So let's ask the question, what makes a person indispensable? Now, I'm going to try uh, a poll here. Uh, and, and this is the first time I'm actually trying this, but I'm going to ask you a question. So let me see if I can uh, make this work. Uh, and the poll I have is coming up right now. Hopefully you can see it. And, you know, the question is, you know, how important is a project manager in your organization? So let's see what we come up with. Very interesting uh, items here. 63% say extremely important. 26% say somewhat important. 11% say no different from any other management. And 2% not important at all. Okay, so if you, if you look at the numbers, we're getting at 55, 56% extremely important and 34% somewhat important. And that, that, that's, a good, that's good news. Okay, that's telling us uh, 
that um, we uh, are making a difference, you're making a difference, and that people are, are paying attention. So uh, the 10 percent of no difference and the 1 percent not important, to me that's very, very encouraging. So let's keep that in mind as, as we go forward. So I'm going to close that particular poll, and we're going to go on to the, uh, the next part here, which is, are you indispensable? So the question is, are you? Are you indispensable? So I actually have another question for you. So let's go to that. The question being, are you indispensable? So let's see what you have to say about that. 23% say, I think so. 29% say, not really. Okay, now we're going we're gonna to work on that just a little bit. This is going to be very interesting. It's going to be fun. 17% uh, say, yes, definitely. 31% think so. 28% uh, say, not really. And that's, that's what I was driving at. I wanted to see just how we feel. Now, it's important for all of us okay, to really be proud of the things that we do. And as I said before, to be professional, and I, I use a quote from Tom Peters all the time, and he says, quit doing less than excellent work. So what we have to do, what we need to work on, is having that perception of, from other people of being excellent at what we do. And that, that's one of your, your jobs going forward, is to really focus on being excellent at what you do, uh, whether it's just in a small project, medium, or large project. Um, it's great to have that, that, that um, reputation. So what we have here is we have 20% say yes, definitely, 31% I think so, 24% say maybe, and 25% not really. So we're kind of split even here in terms of those people that think that we're really uh, indispensable and those that, that think, eh, not so much. But you know what? We're going to be changing that as we go through this presentation and what you're going to be doing going forward. Now, so the question was, are you indispensable? Factors for being indispensable. Okay, these are key words. I think that you should you know, pay attention to the words, think about them. Okay, accomplishability, which is maybe not a word, but you know what? Your ability to achieve and deliver valued results. Think about that. You know, rate yourself in terms of your, your accomplishability. Your value to cost. The value delivered by you in rel relative to the cost of having you around. I, I saw someone in their comments said that we're, that we're uh, uh, overhead. We're going to try to get rid of that perception by showing people just how valuable we can be with our methodologies, our tools, our skills. Um, if you think about it, uh, the PMI Educational Foundation, what they do is they profess the, these, the life skills of the project manager. And you have amazing life skills people skills, leadership skills, communication skills, things that you can d take from one place to another. So think about that in terms of value. Uh, supply and demand, your position relative to the market. Now I can tell you that the studies are out there that are telling us that in the next uh, 10 years or so, there will be more project management jobs of, out there that can be filled by qualified project managers, if you look at the statistics. So there will be supply and demand, but it is also important for you to be aware of this idea of being professional, professional to pr produce uh, excellent work, and to show your value all the time. And the last one, some of you may, may or may not agree with, is likability. And all I want to say about that is that if you are approachable, if you are respectful to other people, Okay, if you smile occasionally, okay, then they, that likability will have a great impact on the team that you work on. So keep that in mind. It's, it's, it's really important for you to have that, that personality that, that people can come up and talk to you and feel comfortable. Now, if you don't focus on becoming indispensable, your value will be limited and your worth in society decreases every day. So how do you do that? How do you become uh, focused on being indispensable? And there's lots of ways to do that. We're going to focus on that. So let's stay away from this, this thought of becoming less relevant and become more and more relevant. Now, just one more thing I'd like to talk about that, and that is back in 1995, I attended the PMI World Congress. It was called the Seminars and Symposiums in uh, 1995 in New Orleans. And the final speaker, and his name was Bob Ross, 
Okay, he actually said something that has been sticking in my mind since then and never left. And his final comments in his presentation were, when you leave this earth, will you leave a vacancy or a void? And boy, that struck home because if you think about it, a vacancy is something that is easily, easily replaced, filled in, but a void is something that will take a long time to, to replace because you left an impression. So you need to think about making an impression. Now, uh, let's talk about time. This is a, a model that comes from uh, Stephen Covey's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And when it comes to time, there is important work and there is urgent work. And somehow we have to kind of make them come together. Okay, most people basically are doing things that are in that lower quadrant, doing unimportant things or low important things that are not urgent. That's trivia, pleasant activities, easy stuff, busy work. You know what? It's comfortable. And you have to ask yourself, are you in that quadrant at all? And is your team in that quadrant or anybody you know? And if you're the, the, the team leader, it's your, your job to, to, to look at ways of getting people out of that particular quadrant. Now, we also have the low important items that somebody else has made urgent. Interruptions during the day. Some meetings that you go to that are probably not worth it what I call fire drills, people telling you, stop what you're doing, do this, and at the end of the day tell you, oh, we're not going to use that. Okay? We need to get away from doing the low important items that are either not urgent or that somebody else has made urgent that are still not important and focus on things like those things that are high in importance but maybe not urgent. And these are, very th these are important things for you to do. Prevention items like risk management, uh, which is something that's an ongoing thing. Maintenance. It's definitely important to maintain ourselves, our team, you know, the equipment that we work with, everything. Uh, relationship building, we don't build relationships overnight, it takes time. And you know what? You need time for recreation. These are all important items, may not be urgent, but you need to plan to do them. And then you have the high important, uh, very, very urgent items like a crisis, the pressing problems that you have to deal with, deadline driven projects. Now, the question that you have to ask yourself is, what quadrants should I be spending most of my time in? And I think your answer should be doing important things, high, highly important things, but I can manage their urgency in terms of what is urgent, not so much urgent, but important, and I can plan out, and those things that are urgent, which means priorities, which I need to establish. So let's focus on working on high important items, and then manage our time more, more carefully. Now, the secret to becoming indispensable. I love this. Anna Timms, a positive attitude and awareness of how to build brand you are as crucial as your team making skills. Very important. So let's talk about it. How can we become indispensable? Some possibilities, right? Instill doubt that you can be replaced. That you can, instill doubt that you can be replaced. In other words, you make it to a point that no way can I let that person go. Uh, Create a sense of risk that your departure would have a uh, create a sense of risk your departure would have on customer relations or profit. In other words, hey, my customers love me. Love me. You can't release me. You can't let me go. Uh, uh, they they they'll be very upset. Uh, exploit gaps in the system and be the only one who fully understands the process. Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, if you're thinking that those are good tactics, these things may actually limit your ability to grow. All right. These things will actually prevent you from moving forward, from getting promotions, from, from uh, doing things that you truly want to do. So what we really want to do is we want you to inventory your value traits. Okay, now let's just uh, uh, go back to you again. And what I want to know is what are your uh, value traits? Can you share with me a couple of what we'll call your value traits, things that, that kind of distinguish you, make you different from other people. So tell me what you come up with. Okay, I'm looking at some of the, uh, the negatives there, pushy, too much documentation, bureaucratic. Now these are things that, that you need to work on. We need to kind of fix that. Ego, overbearing, imposing, uh, RED, red personality types, uh, commanding and controlling. Okay, so let's take a look at your value traits. Okay, um, 
<laughs> okay, we're really good at coming up with some of these negatives. Uh, relationship building is very important. Reliability, honest, honest. We anticipate problems. We are intelligent. We're awesome planners. Dom, thank you very much for that. We're ethical, excellent. High level uh, analysis of issues. We data mine. We're intuitive and empathetic. We're resilient. We understand politics. Okay, detailed and approachable. And I tell you, this is great. So this is what we want to talk about. Big picture, well organized experience. According to Laurie, um, resourceful, integrity. And there you go, integrity. Responsible, analytical, loyal, decision maker, optimistic. We see what's coming before it happens. I really like that one. Okay, so those are your your value traits, and these are things that are important. So you have to ask yourself, how are you different? What key skills, knowledge, or other factors do you bring to your organization? And you know what? You're answering that greatly. We're proactive. Okay. What new skills should you pursue? Think about your communication skills, your leadership skills, your ability to solve conflict, uh, things like that. Your, your ability to persuade and influence people. These are the skills. Uh, the question that you have to ask yourself is how do you know you are valuable? And you know what? You measure that by the pe number of people that come up to talk to you all the time. It's your management of value that's important. When people seek you out, they say, hey, you know, uh, I need your help uh, on this. I, I, I could use your expertise or you've been there before and you seem to really understand these kinds of things. I could use your help. That is when you are reaching this point of being indispensable. So. What we want to do here is that we want to bring what I call a gift to others. In other words, what you do that other people appreciate. Okay? And people will look forward to working with you. So it's this gift that you could bring every day. I want you to think about what that gift might be. And it's not really material at all. But what is that gift? Okay, now, what we have here is we have to overcome what we we'll call the voice of judgment. And that's that little voice behind us that keeps telling us we can't do this, we shouldn't do that, or we, it's too risky or something like that. We're going to have to overcome that, that constant little voice in the back of our minds that's basically inhibiting us and preventing us from, from moving forward. We have to start thinking of can do, will do, I, I know I can do it. Uh, give me a chance and I'll show you how I can succeed. These are the kinds of things that we need to focus on. We have to think indispensable. Now, how do we do that? Well, think of yourself as being a critical part of your project, that you're vital to finding the solution, that you are central in the decision-making process, that you're essential in, with your knowledge, that you are necessary or required or crucial. You, th you see what I'm getting at here? Think in these terms that it's fundamental that I be part of this team. I mean, it should be something that everybody knows. And I'm not talking about being conceited, and I'm not talking about big egos. I'm just simply talking about you finding this value that other people will see. I love the one on the bottom, a keeper. You are a keeper, and think about that. You are absolutely a keeper. Now, what is the one thing that people associate with you in service to your organization's mission? That's another question to ask yourself. Think about this. When, when people think of your name, what do they think about? And, and they, I hope they're thinking in terms of consistency, excellence in execution, ability to solve problems, something. Okay? If I was to c capture that in one word, let's say it's leadership. I want you to be seen by your organization as a strong leader and that you can use that, those leadership skills performing what I call authentic leadership to meet the team's needs and also to meet your organization's mission. It says make it a habit, not a goal, to collaborate with others and exchange knowledge. The more that you know, the more information that you can gather, the more that you learn and teach uh, through other people, uh, you're teaching, uh, there's a quote that I use called, to teach is to learn. The more you do that, the more knowledge you gain, the more interesting a person you become, the more value, valuable you become in your organization, and you become what I refer to as a go-to person. How do you do this? You carry with yourself always a spirit of generosity 
so that you're not going to be worried about what, what people are going to take advantage of you or not. You're there to, to help other people. That's your job as a leader. Okay, some of you might have read the book, The Servant Leader. Now, let's talk brand you. Brand you. Take a look at yourself each day. Never underestimate the importance of the way you look, your image, your dress. And again, I'm not talking about jackets and ties and, and things like that. You know, most people go to work business casual anyway, but it's about you. It's your image. You know, what are the image that you project? Okay? So it's really not about necessarily how you dress, but it's your image that you're professing as a professional. Smile, be upbeat. The more you smile, the more people will see that you're approachable. Uh, create a, uh, a, a resume, a CV, and update it with the things that make you valuable. And ask other people, hey, and, and get, get uh, some p people that you trust, that they're very honest, and can give you some good feedback about what makes you valuable. Ask a lot of questions from people in other departments. Really learn business acumen, a very, very important element of the project managers to really understand how the business runs. And I like this, create and sustain an active social media presence, LinkedIn or Twitter or something like that. Uh, Facebook, uh, uh, you have a number of uh, Instagram, I think, is, is one. Let's be careful about what we put up there. But you know what? Get out there, ask questions, voice your comments, get people to hear what you have to say. Now, it says create value and bring a gift to others. The gift that I'm talking about basically is a smile, it's being friendly, it's being helpful. It's walking in and having people immediately want to come up to you and say, hey, I'm glad that you're here today. I could really use your help on something. I'm going to tell you there's nothing like having that kind of, of, of relationship with people. Become an artist. Artists are creative people. Uh, as uh, Seth Gooden says, a positive deviant, a linchpin. Make things happen. You know, take a risk every once in a while. Um, some people use the term business unusual. Okay, well, let's get away from the business as usual. Let's do something a little bit different. Make sure that you have that professional impression online. And this is, I, I think, extremely important. Is never allow anyone to tag inappropriate pictures of you online. That's part of your brand. And, and you don't want to see people, have people see you in something that's, that's not very flattering. The gift is that extra that you bring each day, the thoughtful gesture, the smile, some kind action. Today is International Project Management Day. Uh, I'm going to say that maybe it's time for other people to, to do something kind to the project manager. But you know what? It, it is our day today. Maybe you can do something kind to somebody else. Buy your team a cup of coffee or some donuts or take a few of them out to lunch if you can, uh, if you have the budget. Uh, do something nice. Teach as much as you can. My uh, uh, professor in one of the uh, leadership uh, master's class courses said that you should make everyone a teacher. We can learn something from everyone. Forget the uh, uh, what's in it for me, W-I-I-F-M. Although everything we do has some, should have value for us, if we think about how we can give to other people and, and express the, the examples that I've been suggesting, then you know what? You're going to get that in return anyway through the thanks of other people. Okay, find something that differentiates you from others, something that people will remember. You know, if you do smile a lot, if you offer help a lot, you know, people are going to remember that all the time. Uh, what we have here are what I call project manager value attitudes. The professional, truthful, ethical, fair, and principled. The financial, managing cost, financial value. The aesthetic, quality and customer satisfaction. We, we want to present an image of professionalism. Okay, the social that we are good at team building, that we are good at building relationships, that we can listen and be uh, empathetic and, and, and help others to succeed. That we're, we understand politics. Uh, this is something that some of us are probably not comfortable with, but you know what? We have to be able to influence people in a proper way. We have to manage conflict. We have to get people to, to uh, instead of become, being resistors, maybe get on our side because we have great ideas and we're enthusiastic and we can show them the value that we can produ produce. And we're leaders. We're setting an example. Are you setting an example every day? Are you creating confidence amongst other people? Are you motivating others? Are you building loyalty? These are the project manager value attitudes that we need to work on. So indispensable versus irreplaceable. Okay, Indispensable. Deliver a massive impact. 
have people look at your project and go, wow, you did that, you saved this amount of money, you gave this to the customer and the customer was able to do this. Okay? This mindset of, of, of success and, and producing value wrapped around lots and lots of skills and the attributes that you have, the leadership skills, communication skills, problem solving, okay? working with people. I like this. Indispensable people are the types that you can hand any project, put in nearly any role, issue a challenge to, and they simply make things happen by understanding what, it, what must get done and adapting their skills accordingly. Okay, now I have uh, one more poll I wanted to, to give you. Okay, so let's see if we can get this one to come up. Okay, and uh, this question is, how well are you managing your personal brand? So let's take a look at that. Take a look at your personal brand. Well, we have people, 14% uh, uh, saying very efficiently, 48 somewhat efficiently, 30% not very efficiently, and 1% are not managing my brand at all. Okay, so we don't have a lot of people that are very efficient at their brand, about 17, 18%, that 50% saying somewhat. All right, let's work on that. I'm, I'm hoping that this uh, presentation today and the thought about International Project Management Day and the value that you bring to an organization will uh, enhance and, and heighten your um, need to build your personal brand. This is extremely important. It's probably the biggest message of the day is to, is to really get people to understand what you do, okay? That people should say, wow, there's a project manager. You know, that person, he or she, they do amazing things. And, and we, we want that kind of impression. So if I look at the poll, 50% somewhat, and we have 30%. If I, if I look at 30 to 31% that we're not doing it very well. So take some of these points that I, I mentioned and think about how you can change and add to your brand, make your brand uh, more visible and just keep building on it all the time. Okay, that's an important thing. Now, uh, indispensable versus irreplaceable. If you are irreplaceable according to your management, you're locked in a role, you're going to have a finite set of skills, you're never going to be able to escape. Um, you're keeping information from others because you're trying to protect yourself. Uh, you're showing somehow that you can't be replaced. And if you can't re be replaced, you can't be promoted. You can't grow. You can't expand. And you're not going to expand your horizons. So we're not talking about being irreplaceable. Okay? What we are doing here is we're becoming indispensable in the minds of others because you're going to do more than your job says. You're going to not wait for the pat on the back. You're just going to keep moving forward, and hopefully those acknowledgments will catch up with you. You're going to anticipate the needs of your team and your organization, that you are going to make it essential that people come to see you, that you are now an essential part of a team. Uh, and, you know, a lot of teams have MVPs, and there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing is I can tell you is that MVPs are selected by other players. So maybe you should think about it. if all these things you do would potentially make you an MVP. Uh, we're going to display optimism. We're not going to whine or complain. That is the last thing you want to do as a leader. You're always going to look for the solutions. Um, it says here, befriend your boss and associates. And I'm not talking about being best friends with people. But you know what? I think it's important to be friendly. It's important to be civil and respectful. And I think that if you can just keep that in mind, that you will actually see that you have kind of, in a way, befriended your, your organization, your boss, your associates, in a way that people will truly show respect for you. Uh, serve others. By serving others, to be honest with you, you are serving yourself. So don't worry about you. Worry about others and help people to succeed. All right? If you have any weak links, strengthen your weak links. The great employee ignores boundaries of job descriptions. Sometimes people think the great the uh, great employee is a very eccentric person. They seem to smile a lot, uh, and you know, if you think about that, that might look a little strange. But you know what? It, I think it's a good idea. You know, do something that's a little bit unusual. Get people to pay attention to you. Okay. Make sure that you express that individuality, but you should be part of a seamless team, very cohesive team. Make sure that you publicly praise others. If you're going to complain about something, please do it privately. No one really likes to hear complaints, but you know, criticisms, complaints, problem areas do need to be raised. Let's do that in an appropriate and professional way. Uh, speak out when you have to. 
we can't get anything done unless somebody's vocal, right? Uh, if there's doubters out there, find out why they doubt you and then prove them wrong. And fiddling means always doing something. You're always busy doing some kind of thing that's useful. Here's a nice uh, suggestion, kind of a quote. Build your team to sail the ship without you. Teach them everything you know and hire people smarter than you. Equip yourself to always bring something powerful, unique, and pivotal to your work, but make it a methodology, not a checklist that's unique to any one discipline. It's pivotal. It's a methodology. It's something that people can't live without. Okay? Uh, we adapt as much as we can. We're very flexible as leaders. We thrive on things that are given to us. We like challenges. Okay? And we're building our skills all of the time. So basically it means that few businesses can th thrive without these people that we call indispensable project managers. They're authentic leaders. Uh, and basically, I, I just put this in here. Just I just found this in a book that a very good friend of mine, Kay, uh, gave me called the, the Little Big Things by Tom Peters. And uh, to lead is to measurably help others succeed, Tom Peters. And no matter what the situation, the great manager's first response is always to think about the individual concern and how things can be arranged to help that individual experience success. This comes right out of that book. Now, final thoughts. No one is actually totally indispensable. So I, I have to concede that. However, the real goal here is for you to be a go-to person, to continuously build your skills, your knowledge, educate yourself, teach other people, show people that you are constantly looking to grow your, 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 your knowledge and so on, but you want to share with other people and you want other people to succeed. Become that go-to person because that's what's going to make you indispensable. Project managers should be sought after for their wide range of skills and experience. Make sure that you're out there and, and to be honest with you, raise your own flag once in a while. Get people to notice you. There is nothing wrong with that. Now, I was at the World Congress in Phoenix, and I listened to Magic Johnson deliver a, a presentation that I was very, very impressed with. And I just want to leave you with a couple of his tips that I had taken as notes. Be there first. If you're the leader, you better be there first before anybody else arrives. Uh, attitude. You're always there to win. We're win together. Okay. Uh, go to the next level. Go for the championship. You know, what's out, out there? Never stop. Go to the next level. Play against something better than you. If you're playing with someone better than you, you are going to improve your skills. There's no doubt about it. Uh, do a personal SWAT, a personal strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Find out where you are today, where you want to be tomorrow. Network as much as you can. Use International Project Management Day as, a, as an example of networking. Go to LinkedIn and Facebook and, and uh, Twitter and get out there and get people to, uh, to notice who you are and learn from them. Make sure you understand your customer. If you don't understand your customer, you can't possibly succeed. Don't worry about your ego. Your ego is not the important. Put it aside. Uplift your brand. Never be satisfied with where you are. Go for something better. Go to the next level all the time. Give back. Give back to the community. Uh, I try to do that as much as I can. There are lots of people I know that do that through volunteer work. Give back to your community. Be demanding but fair. The, the, the really, really committed people don't watch clocks. They just seem want to get things done. And number 12, know your team. These are all the top leadership tips that uh, Magic Johnson had uh, described during his pr presentation in Phoenix at the World Congress. The indispensable uh, project manager, network as much as you can, be excellent at something, and make sure that people see that. Okay, create something useful, a new process, a new procedure, find something that, that people can use that's going to make the, their life and the organization better. Innovate. Innovate and be creative. Do what you can to make others feel good. Share, teach, mentor, and coach. I think that that's another role of the project manager. And make a commitment to make a difference. That's what we do as project managers, regardless of the type of project that you work on. Think in terms of leadership. The project manager, professionalism at all times, respect for all stakeholders, ownership of each assignment, judicial decision maker, excellence in execution, communicator, team player. That's the project side of project manager. And the manager side is motivator action-oriented negotiator, always available, 
genuine commitment, energetic and empowering. That's you, the project manager, and you're responsible for success. So hopefully you enjoyed the, the session. I know you have a lot to do today. It's International Project Management Day. So uh, with that, if you have any final questions, uh, feel free to uh, add them. I'll take a look and we'll see if we can answer as many questions as we can in the, in the remaining time. And um, for those of you that are interested in PVUs, here's your PVU information. This is a Category B session. All the information is right there. I'm going to leave that up. And I'm going to see if we have any questions that uh, anybody might have. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at the comments. Uh, code of conduct, uh, organizationally sensitive. These are things that we do as project managers. Professionalism, integrity. We can connect the dots. We navigate across the organization. So Chris, uh, Chris said that. Chris, thank you. That's an excellent comment. Okay, we have uh, know who to ask. Can we get this slide presentation? Uh, if you want this slide presentation, then uh, let me just back up on my slides for a second. Okay, send me a note to my email address, salatuspmp at msn.com, and this is also being recorded, and uh, it will be available on internationalpmday.org if you want to go there. And there's also a message that I created, it's a video, about International Project Management Day. If you can find the time to show that video sometime today, that would be great. It's just a very short video. It just talks about you know, what International Project Management Day is about. I know many of you uh, are going to sign up to the International Institute for Learning uh, mega virtual conference that begins, actually the first presentation begins at 10 a.m. this morning. Uh, go to www.iil.com to register and sign up. Over 43,000 people have registered for that all-day virtual conference, but you have two weeks actually to listen to all of the programs, all the videos that are on there. So let me see if we have any questions. Um, the PDU, I have the PDU information up. Uh, it says something about with a glass of wine. All right, okay, that's, it might be Allison that said that with a glass of wine. So uh, anyway, yeah, you know what? Have a glass of wine. Uh, go out uh, this afternoon and, and have, uh, have one of those uh, refreshing uh, cocktails to just, just to give yourself a pat on the back if nobody else does. Uh, how do you deal with, deal with people in your team who ocu occupy higher position than yours? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think the first thing you're going to have to do is emphasize that it's a team, right? So that means if it's a team that we're working together, that we are collaborative, that uh, no one is outranking anyone else. We have a job to do. Let's focus on our individual job and not let's, let's not impose our higher rank on other people. Uh, what you have to do is it, it's an individual kind of a thing. If you have people that are in higher level positions and, and possibly are attempting to impose, then that's a one-on-one -on -one discussion with you to make sure that everybody understands their role. I think that that's a, a key item. And what we're looking for here is collaboration, cooperation, and integration. And the project manager is leading the team, and I think that people that are in those higher positions that are on that team need to. They need to focus on why am I here? And if I have advice to give to you as a leader, I can certainly do that, but I can do that offline. So make sure that you have that, that, that conversation with these folks and set your expectations intentionally with them so that you don't run into those problems later. Okay, I will definitely share the presentation. Okay, that, uh, I'm not, I don't have all the names I can see. It looks like it might be Stan. Uh, I will share it. Uh, can you please share your deck? Desmond, uh, okay, Desmond, send me an email and I will uh, make sure you get it. Okay, um, that's Desmond Chambers. So it's, Desmond, send me an email and I will get that to you. Uh, can you show the four block time management slide again? Okay, let me, uh, let me go back. Just give me a second to do that. Um, in the meantime, um, if you have any other questions, put them up there. And if we don't get to your question, uh, you can send me an email. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Today is International Project Management Day, so my, uh, my goal here is to communicate with as many of you as possible. And, uh, and the way, best way to do that would be through email. So there's your, your slide on time management. 
great way to kick off our project management day. Uh, I can't make out the name, but F L O Y Floy might be Florence or something like that. Uh, outstanding! Wow, thank you very much. Go back to the PDU. I will do that. Frank, how does one balance conventional PM with agility uh, as PM? Well, okay. To tell you the truth, conventional project management is changing, and although I'm, I can't say that it is becoming more agile, as in the agile approach or scrum approach, that what we're seeing here now, that the shift that we're seeing in project management is more about execution than it is about planning. And I think that they're learning that from Agile. See, in Agile, the emphasis is not on documentation so much as it's actually producing something, an artifact. So the agility here is that although we need to have a plan, I'm very fond of a quote from Napoleon. Napoleon said, that the first casualty in any battle is the plan. And that simply means that whatever you have planned, expect it to change to be the, the minute execution begins. So have a plan, because if you don't have a plan, then it's very difficult to get anywhere. But let's make sure we understand that the plan is going to change, and agility is your ability to be able to move with the changes. We use a term in project management called progressive elaboration. Right, adding more detail as we move forward. Okay, things are going to change, so you need to be ready to pounce on an opportunity, which means to, to move to one side or the other, and, and to continuously build that path. So it's going to be somewhat iterative in terms of planning, but from a traditional perspective, we still need to have a plan, no question about it. Okay, uh, the email is salatuspmp at msn.com, and I will definitely put that up again so you can do that. Um, I will put the PDU information up. Uh, someone said that I made their day. Well, you know what? You have all made my day by being on this call this morning to help me kick off International Project Management Day. Now, for next year, I'm, I'm planning something big, something a, an actual live conference, uh, and I'm kind of leaning towards it's going to be someplace in Orlando, Florida. It will be on or about November... I have to take a look at the calendar, but it'll be this time uh, next year. If you're interested, uh, p you know, keep an eye on uh, the, uh, the International Project Management Day website. I might even need a few project managers to help me out with that, so, uh, so, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, uplifting my approach is to be not irreplaceable, but to help others. Uh, wow, excellent. Uh, who said that? Uh, Blick? Blick and staff? Okay. Um, you are all indispensable in my wor eyes. And I think that, um, you know, continue to do that. Continue to learn. What happens when you are a project manager, but they see you as support staff? Well, uh, where you're not the leader. Well, you know what? A project manager, if, you, if we focus on the term authentic leader or authentic leadership, that means that any person at any level in an organization will, that produces value is a leader, okay? So um, uh, there are books out there that you don't need a title to be a leader, you know, these kinds of things. You don't need followers to be a leader, all those different things. Okay, what I th I'm going to suggest is that you focus on producing things that other people will take note of. They want to come up to you and say, wow, that was excellent. I appreciate that. What you need to do is expand out of what, you're, what you perceive your role to be and do other things. Now, I, uh, one caution. I never tell people don't go and do beyond your job until you have your job pretty much under control. Once you do, when you really feel that I am very comfortable and this is becoming kind of like routine because I'm really covering all the aspects of the work, then step out. Go to the next level. Get something else. Volunteer for some other item. It's very important that you do that. So, um, you know, don't think in terms of I'm not the leader. Think in terms of what I'm going to do and that will allow people to pay attention to you and start coming to you. And before you know it, you will be considered a leader and you will be given more and more leadership positions. So, so hopefully Jennifer, uh, I think that's Jennifer or Jennings, uh, I, I answered your question. Okay. Um, my email, I'll put the email up in a second. These are the PDUs that... Um, 
that you get one PDU for today. There'll be more webinars like this. And uh, if you are, happen to be interested in, in delivering a webinar that you might want to share to the project management community, uh, let me know about that. And I will certainly uh, uh, get in touch with you about setting something up. Okay. Question is, um, wish that everyone in an organization could have a little bit of project manager. <laughs> now, that I think I might have to use that as a quote. Okay, to tell you the truth, everybody is a little bit of a project manager. Most people have managed projects. So um, the only thing I can say is uh, some of us probably do it better than others. And, and show, show people how to do things better. Let's not be bureaucratic and, and let's not be too rigid. Let us focus on how we're going to help people and show that project management and project managers are indispensable to business. Okay? My email? SalatisPMP at MSN.com. Visit www.internationalpmday.org and, and listen to my video, a very brief video. But I think you'll get the idea behind what uh, International Project Management Day is about. And I'd like to thank you all for, for being here. And if you have any uh, uh, questions uh, that I didn't answer, send me an email. I'll be happy to get back to you. And again, try to find ways to become excellent in some way. Uh, Learn something new all the time. Make everybody a teacher. Okay. Um, I, I can't get all the questions. I'm sorry I won't be able to answer all the questions. But uh, anyway, uh, I, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And keep in touch. Go to the website. Uh, uh, I, it looks like I answered a lot of someone's questions. Simple but valuable sharing. Second glass of wine. <laughs> I think I like that one. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate you being here. And uh, pass the word on about international project management to other people. And like I said, if you uh, want the presentation, send me an email. I will definitely get back to you on that. Okay? So thank you, and enjoy the day. And if I was out there and I, I see you uh, and we have the time, I'll certainly buy you that glass of wine. Uh, and maybe if I see you at a PMI or a project management program somewhere, um, there's nothing like... Uh, sharing a nice cold beer or something uh, or with my, my good friend Kay who introduced me to something called the Moscow Mule. I think I might go have one of those at the end of today. Anyway, thank you very much. I appreciate your time and uh, stay in touch. Thank you.